And welcome back, everyone, to Meta HSC. Uh, a quick uh, update on the uh, on what has been happening as our producers accidentally uh, just jumped into one of the size, which is unfortunate. Uh, our original game was supposed to be broadcasting was going to be Mars and Tango McLean's, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Martin has been forced to forfeit due to player availability. So uh, we'll be jumping instead into game two of the uh, of this series here, which is Carring Bar taking on Aurora. So New South Wales taking on the WA squad here. Uh, one game has already been completed because this was, as you may guess, a very last minute change. Uh, Carring Bar won that three to two. I'm Chris, being joined by Kex, by the way, if you weren't aware. And well, we get into game two here. Hipswell gets it a quick goal straight off the bat. <laughs> Yeah, very quick one there. Uh, uh, Carring Bar starting strong, striking while the iron's hot after that last win as well. And uh, I gotta say, uh, three to two is a pretty good effort for Aurora here. They have come in as quite the underdogs for the tournament as a whole, and uh, they are showing up very, very well right now. Yes, indeed. Uh, they've also already had one game as well, and that was against McLean's, and they lost that three to nothing. So at the moment, they are sort of fighting for their spots to even make the playoffs here. If they don't win this game, it is going to be a pretty hard task, we would have to say, to make it as Tatagane just gets a goal from downtown there, just sends it in from his own corner, and yeah, there's just no one there to block it off. Yeah, just going to get away from uh, Lockster there as a uh, second goal. Does exactly as you said, get away, and uh, now it's going to come back to this backboard as Tadagane gets there. A nice touch, tries to just get those mechanics out and get the Doomsie off the backboard, but unable to do so. A great touch the second time round, though. Read it perfectly off that backboard and strikes straight into the back of net. Yeah, that was a very, very good touch there. Trix Gex was already pushing forward and well there was no way he was going to stop in time to stop that play from Tadagane so well done from the mechanics man to get that goal and well just like that it is a 3-0 stomp early on here Aurora really struggling to keep up here with the boys from Carring Bar High as Tatagane looks for a nice save here gets the ball behind all the defenders Hipstoel is there as well but he's going in the wrong direction Parallel to the net, so goals will remain free to nothing here as we get past the opening minute of action here. But yeah, Carring Bar really putting the foot down in it this second game. Now, Hipstoel gonna pop that back to Tadagane, nearly works, does manage to keep the control at the very least. But Tricks Geeks will grab this, it's gonna go center field and come off that wall nice and high. Merck Steel, the first one to get there. Merck Steel, uh, the man here who's probably earned some of the, one of the most high stats for getting MVP uh, of any player <laughs> right now in the tournament. Getting beaten right now, this 3-0 line of goals. And Lurksil is just going to sneak one through there to get the first for a uh... For Aurora, uh, Tadagane having a massive whiff there in the last man back, and uh, yeah, that is just uh, a very unfortunate touch, or very unfortunate whiff there to say the very least, as does open up an opportunity here for him now, as Tadagane doesn't really get a good angle there to play a shot, so he's just going to center the ball up the hips to well here. Can he get the ball over? No, he can't. The ball just heads back to the other side. Jeremiah now gets the ball. Goes for a backwards pass. She finds Merck Steel, who puts it onto the backboard. Tatagane now going up to try and get to a teammate. Will be hips to well. Can he get the fourth goal in for Karimar? No, he won't. Force being blocked. Tatagane finds the ball into the corner. Will he be able to pinch it down? Just dribbles across oh. the face of the net. Cheremai tries to keep it locked into the attack, but Merck Steel, once again, just gets a touch of the ball. Tries for a quick counter, but this time around, Tatagane will be able to get the block. I gotta say, I have a little bit of respect for Karing by the way they're playing this right now. Going for massive passing plays since they're up by two right now. Merck Steel might be able to get some movement on that ball though, back towards the other side. 
In comes Lockster. That's going to go dead center, but nobody there to capitalize. Trix Kicks might be able to pick something up. It'll be Merc Steel on it after that demo. A bump there as well, but Tadagane is ready for it. Diaz. Oh, that was very close there for Tadagane to get another goal, but won't be able to do it this time around. Now, an opportunity here for him as it's the whale. Able to get the save and the clear out as well. For carrying bar, Aurora having the chance to score there, but unable to convert. Cherami tries to lock it into attack for the blue side, but was just dribbling around here as carrying bar. Yeah, they're just looking for these passing plays. They're just looking for setups, and Cherami will be the beneficiary of one of those. Gets a goal to bring it to four-one. Yeah, hammers it off the ceiling. Katagana actually did try to read it off the backboard himself as well, but comes back down and uh, put away by Cherami. Um, now, all members of Carrying Bar on the board for goals. Tadagane leading it with two, of course, there, and 4-1 uh, scoreline is looking pretty healthy there for Carrying Bar. Very healthy indeed. It seems like an unassailable lead as we enter the final minutes, and well, being that that will mean a 2-0 scoreline for them here and Afria might be beckoning quickly. That might be nice as Cherami just denies himself an, a goal with that touch there. Uh, Hipsoil looking to try and get it back to Cherami. Can he dunk get down? No, he can't, but Tadagane is waiting in the oh, wings nice. and he will pick up a hat trick. A great little touch on backboard. It's so easy here for this pinch to go far too fast, but almost call, you could call that a uh, pancake touch. Not quite. Gets it down at a very nice speed to Tadagane to pick up the hat trick. Indeed, and that's the sort of stuff we expect from Tadagane. A lot of mechanics, but when he needs to go for a softer touch, he has shown time and time again that he can just give it a nice little chip into the net. So, 30 seconds remaining here. Karingba, really dominant to say the very least in this series. And well, this is good, not only for them. Cells, but for New South Wales overall as well. Historically in Rocket League, they haven't really been the strongest state or region for that matter to come out. That's only always been South Australia and the uh, Kiwis. So, yeah, this is very good for New South Wales, as I suppose we do have a bit of a change in the guard as the uh, former only lineup that used to dominate Australia at the very least. Well, they haven't signed up this year, and that's just opening it up for the likes of. Well, the Red Barons in their own state, who we will see a little bit later on in the broadcast, and also Carrying Bar and YBG to possibly take up the mantle of the uh, best team in Australia as mm. Carrying Bar makes easy work of that world to line up 5-1 to one at 2 in the series. Yeah, good to see our first game on stream, but yeah, it was the second one in the series, and uh, it's looking at this rate like it is probably going to be a very definitive 3-0 uh, series here, and they are just ruling this match, really showing what they're capable of, not just in their own mechanics, but uh, team play mechanics. I mean, they, they are passing so, so well to each other, uh, even in smaller, less pretty plays like that little touch down from the backboard, like that pinches away so easily. It was a brilliant touch to get that to a teammate. And uh, it is little plays like that that are really impressing me about carrying, but they find each other no matter what. And uh, it's really coming through for them right now. Yeah, it's very good to see from them here. And the other thing as well is they're also not really lifting their foot off the gas as much as some people may be expecting. They are they're definitely not getting as many goals as they possibly could, but they're also showing a fair bit of respect to their opponents here. They're looking for those passing plays. They are going for goals when they need to. They're still also mm. liable to a few errors here and there as well. But uh, yeah, this is... Uh, this is some nice stuff to see from the uh, blue side here. Carrying Bar has get into game three, and what could possibly be a 3-0 uh, sweep from here as... Uh, no, they've actually swapped sides here. Uh, it's going to be Wilton now on the blue side, and Carrying Bar on the orange. That was a little bit unexpected, but uh, luckily we picked that up before we made too many errors. Too many errors indeed. It comes in, and there's the errors again. It's going to be... <laughs> errors again on the side of a run and uh, an open net opportunity for Karingba. 
Yeah, an open net for Willerton, actually, Gex. As, Wilton, but sorry. there's an error there. So <laughs> I thought even calling it out might avoid the error, but alas, that's not to be. But we can say for sure now, so blue side is OP. But anyways, yeah. Merck is able to clear out the ball here. Might be looking for another opportunity for Aurora. Gets very close. They're forced to triple commit there, carrying bar just to get the save. That's how Guardian now clears it out, gets an attempt, but won't be able to finish up the play that Hipswell began. Tatagane, though, once again, goes back to the skies. Can he flip it in? No, lots of cuts underneath, but the ball's still going towards the net. Eventually cleared out by Merck Steel. The Cherami just forcing the issue. He has really lifted off the canvas, Cherami has, so far today. As I said at the end of the last series, Normally more of a third man, but today it's really lifted as Hipsterwell gets an open opportunity upon high, and we'll get the equalizer a minute 15 in. Yeah, I mean, it was good to see uh, Aurora Bulletin High School up early, but it's going to be tough to hold against uh, such a strong team in carrying by. They fire back so, so quickly. Uh, they do have a little bit of an advantage here in that Jeremy... Uh, is getting some major, major ping fluctuations right now as well, and uh, even some packet loss there as well, so might be able to make some advantages out of that situation. Yeah, it was, uh, well, it was 44, but it looks like a fair bit of packet loss there for Cherubine, mm. but it has stabilized for now the very least, so hopefully that will remain the case as... He will steal the ball all the way. He gets it centered. That is a nice little touch from Tatagane. Last not on target or to his teammate at Hipster Wales. So the scores will remain one all here as we get towards three minute remaining mark. Termite just slowing up the play here. Really uh, just looking to try and find an option to play with. Won't be able to though. So it brings the ball back to the own backboard and to Tatagane. Loses control immediately, however. And this is opportunity for locks up at ball. Keep it taken away. Merkseal. Picks it up from underneath, locks to get out of his way, and now Merck's still looking for the center, but Cherami comes from underneath to seal the ball away. Cherami and Hipsterwell are now looking to push forward here, gets up the backboard. Any final touch? No, not there, as Cherami comes from a little bit too late, but that still means Merck is able to bring it up the field. Yeah, and a good center by him as well. Tadagane just getting underneath it very, very quickly, though. Great flip reset by Hipster Whale. Maybe should have delayed it, but does get it to the teammate. Off that backboard, Jeremy strikes so strongly. Yeah, good follow through there from Jeremy. Just really having to nail it in. Merck Steel going the wrong way. Tries to redirect his car, but just unable to get there in time. He really only started moving backwards when it was too late, so... Yeah, carrying bar back into the lead here, but Aurora, they're getting a few opportunities now. They've already got a one goal. Can they add more to their totals? We'll find out as Cherami. I actually think Cherami might have been blocked a little bit there, but yeah, it's able to still get the clear out regardless. If Soil now just looking to try and get it to a teammate, won't be able to. Merck Steel interrupts his play, but Cherami actually loses control of his car, forces Tadagane to really rally back into the corner. Katagane, oh, oh, we've seen him go for those dangerous saves before. Has just worked out for a demo this time, but uh, he definitely does like to go for those riskier moves out of the net. Yeah, and I thought Merck Steel absolutely had that under control. There didn't seem to be a lot of chance for a save there, but that demo was that small chance. A good touch out, but Trick Skicks is up. He is a mistake out of Aurora, and will oh, it capitalize? No, there's actually a save from their opponents as <laughs> Tadagane throwing this one away. Oh, he gets the <laughs> dose anyways. He picks up a goal, so everyone gets one each on the uh, carrying bar lineup. But uh, yeah, I think he just wanted to steal a goal away from his team right there. But you know what? He got himself a goal, so we'll let that slide for the moment. But yeah, carrying bar three one up here, and it looks like they put power down here. So they've had enough with a little bit of mucking around. They're just wanting to end the series now and have a nice long break heading into their two o'clock game. As Tadagane just taps the ball down. No one's actually going to be able to touch it for carrying bar. That opens it up for Merck Steel. A little bit of miss comes there from the team from Sutherland Shire, and that has just opened up the door for Willington yet again, who closes the gap mm. back down to one. Yeah, not only an open goal, but now opening up an opportunity. One 
goal away from evening this up and Aurora is displaying some skills we haven't seen till this game three remembering that they are on match point they might be able to take one back here especially if Tabagane keeps taking it back he just wants all the goals for himself <laughs> Yeah, he really wants to just try and pad his stats for the MVP vote as Jeremiah now looks to get another goal. But no, Tadagani once again, just the nicest teammate. He is. God, I don't, you don't know which side he's on here. Is it even possible or is he a true I think player it's, for uh, Game Bar? Well, I think it's a 1v5. Three, five. Teams, I suppose, <laughs> Jeremiah just looks to try and find something here, but Mercil seals it away. And this is on target. This is a goal. No, Tadagani is not the imposter. He gets the save there. Luxter, you've got to go up on that. You've got to try to make something of that situation. Now, hipster, hipster whale, whale this time is the <laughs> suspicious member of the team pushing it away. It will be down to one goal. Can they get one more to finish it? No. Tadagane looks promising, <laughs> but it hits ground right on goal line. Yeah, and that will be a 3-0 win to Carrying Bar. We'll, decide, we'll dissect that game and give our MVPs after this short break. So come back in 90 seconds as well. We will go through the post game of Carrying Bar, take you on Aurora. Are we live? Yep, sweet. And welcome back, everyone, to Meta HSC. Just going to be talking about the post game now for that game between Caring Bar and Aurora. And well, that was a pretty dominant win there from Caring Bar, apart from maybe some game free shenanigans. But apart from that, it's what we wanted to see from them here if they want to make it to the grand final. Dominant game, but it was only a one goal win. It was only a one-goal win, Chris. So I close. Wonder why. <laughs> you look at those shots there, it really shows the uh, game. I mean, uh, Caring Bus stepping up with nine shots to four. And, uh, you know, I, I got to give it out there to Merck Steele. He really did step up for the team. I it mentioned he has been uh, picked multiple times in uh, the tournament in the state uh, regions, at the very least, as the MVP. He... Uh, he definitely has the ability to play when needed, but it's just too much against Carrying Bar. I mean, they were so dominant that, yeah, like <laughs> like we were talking about, stepping up and saving their own goals just to uh, compete amongst themselves, really, at the end. They're uh, not the uh, most respectful players from them, but did show what they were capable of. It did indeed, as... Well, they got the 3-0 win at the very least. They still remain tied with McLean at the very least at the top of the table because of it. 
So with that, only one more thing to do. Choose IVP yet again. Fairly tough for this to decide from this carrying bar lineup, but uh, we've made our call and mm. it's going to be going to Hipswell this time around. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> that messing around in that last match is one of the reasons that it made it so tough to pick, but it's also the reason that we picked Hips to Whale. Uh, the one member of the team probably throwing the least <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> coming in there. Hips to Whale uh, stepped up as a reliable member of the team with that little bit of an edge of respect for his teammates. And uh, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta chuck him a bit of respect for that as well. Yeah, uh, he, I mean, he did get a, his own little imposter moment as well at the end, but even throughout the series, he was getting a fair few good goals. He was setting up mm. as well in the midfield as well. So, yeah, I think it was a very deserved MVP for him there. So, at the moment, that will be our uh, last game that we see from Karen Bar today, although in saying that, uh, depending on what happens with Mars and if they're able to get their team back in time, we might even see him a little bit later on. So, for now, we'll head to... Uh, Next main break, and when we come back at 2 o'clock, it'll be the first appearance of the Kiwis. So we'll be taking on Yarrow Valley at 2 p.m. AEST. So, see you in half an hour for that game. 